wasting your ammunition, Blinky. Superman, the Man of Steel, is truly a classic American hero. And back in the 1950s was a hit television series that made stars out of the actors who played the Daily Planet's reporters. Clark Kent, Superman's alias, Lois Lane, and a lovable cub reporter, Jimmy Olsen, played by Jack Larson. Can't you think of some other word to call it, Miss Lane? I don't want to be known as the boy with the cute typewriter. I'm afraid it's hopeless, Jimmy. I once knew a woman who referred to the Grand Canyon as cute. Well, whatever you call it, I didn't know the chief was handing out raises. Oh, I didn't get a raise. Then I didn't know he was handing out rich uncles. In a way, I guess you could say an uncle had something to do with it. Uncle Sam. When I was in school, I used to buy treasury savings stamps every week. By the time I graduated, they turned into bonds. So you cashed in the bonds on this typewriter? Only part of them. You see, the interest I got on my investment made the bonds worth a lot more than what I put into them. It's such a delight to welcome Jack Olson. Uh, Jack Larson. Oh, I combined the two, didn't I? <laughs> That's okay. You haven't changed. Oh. You well, haven't. I just, I just watched that myself. No, too. you haven't. You look oh. wonderful. How are you? I, I'm very, very good. Very happy to be in Boston. Good, Jack. We're glad you're here. You know, um, the seven years you spent on that show, there's no way to get it, to escape them. They are a part of your life, a fixed part of your life, aren't they? Yes, I found that out. I tried to escape. I grew a beard for years because I was so tight with Jimmy. You wanted to hide. I did. I did hide. <laughs> and I did I, I I went underground. I, you know, I quit acting and I became a writer. I had written before. I'd done Jimmy as a kid, but I became a writer and I was one of the original off-off Broadway playwrights. And that was my beard period. Why was there some bittersweet uh, a notion to that success for you? Well, it took me by surprise. When I did the show, I was promised I wanted to get to New York. I was theater crazy, and I'd been under contract to Warner Brothers Studios. And when I was offered uh, the, the Superman show, it was one of the first things ever filmed in television, they told me that no one would ever see it. They say, kid, you want to get to New York and, and be on the stage, take the money and run. And so I went to New York, and uh, when the show went on the air, we became very popular. Superman's always had this popular yes. appeal. And suddenly I had crowds following me in the streets, and I couldn't take the subways. And I did what used to be called freaked. I just wasn't ready for that kind of... Um, Fame. You hadn't been in the business long enough to build <coughs> up to it. It just overnight happened. I'd been in the business, but I didn't think of it. And it was yeah. a different quantity yeah. of, uh, or quality uh, of uh, uh, people liking you than uh, people normally experience. Well, Lois Lane, what was her real name? There were two. Uh, Phyllis Coates played the first season and Noelle Neal. The one we just saw in that clip. That's Noelle that's, Neal. Yeah, that's Noelle. That's the one I think uh -huh. I relate to. Yes, she's one Whatever that. happened to her? Where is she? Do you know? Do you keep yes, in touch? Yes, sure. We're in touch all the time. Uh, Noelle, uh, we used to play uh, volleyball down <laughs> on the beach. She lives near the beach at Santa Monica, and I live inland just a bit, and we're friends, and she's, she's a darling woman. George Reeves. Very sad. George committed suicide. Yes, yes, yes. You must have had strong feelings about that. I sad. did. It made me quit acting. He was tight, and he was fighting it. He couldn't get other work, you know? It's one of the things when you become very popular or famous on a television series. At that time, there was really no crossover at all. Now, the, the young man I just worked with, and we'll talk later, but as a producer, because I produce films You work now, with Michael J. Fox. Michael J. Fox. Yeah. He's crossed over. And I also worked on Urban Cowboy with uh, uh, John Travolta. John obviously crossed over into motion pictures of the field. But at that time uh, in television, and it's still pretty true now, I noticed the people that are very popular they don't translate their careers into film or even stage. Uh, at that time, it was impossible. But and now at least it's possible, but it's still difficult. It's possible, but very difficult. But at that time, it was impossible. And you got typed, and they only wanted you in this television series. And I'm now very grateful for it because people, well, you're having me on the show today. Well, you have, but your career <laughs> and your, your ability with the arts has spanned so many different forms. Go on and explain, Michael J. Fox. You wrote this movie, didn't you? No, 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 no. No, I, I'm one of the, I'm co-producer. Oh, that's right. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, Blank no, out. I did know film, that. Uh, Bright Lights, Big City, right. off of uh, Jay McInerney's novel, and it's written and directed by James Bridges, who I've worked with. He began his directing career doing plays of mine off, off Broadway and in Los Angeles, and then when he became an, and, and we've worked on uh, 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 China Syndrome, The Paper Chase, which was shot in Boston, it's just uh, Urban Cowboy. Perfect. Mike's Murder with Deborah Winger, which was a very All the popular movie done. here. Yeah. You've done a lot of popular work. You've done mm -hmm. a lot of classical work. You're a librettist. I'm a librettist. Now, I don't, you have to explain that. <laughs> well, what exactly is a librettist? It, it quite had to be explained to me. A librettist <laughs> writes all the words. I, I, oh, I wrote plays in verse. 
That's really how, when I was a kid, I was, had a mania for writing verse, and I wrote these plays in verse, and that's how I became an actor. I was going to a, a odd school in Pasadena, and uh, not the Pasadena Playhouse, but just it was the last years of high school, the first years of college, and I was encouraged to write plays in verse, and Talent Scott saw me, and I got a contract at Warner Brothers. Being a ham, I gave myself good parts on these plays. And that later, when I became a writer, when I spoke of the off-off-Broadway period and then off-Broadway, uh, uh, composers got interested in my writing. Exactly, because it's rather non-commercial writing verse and people hate it, you know. Give me an example. Uh, uh, there uh, is one piece you were gonna, fan for, fanfare for peace, you said is very timely. Just, can you no. give us a little line from that? I can, well it's a text, it's not a play, it's a text that I wrote of a, uh, uh, that Charles Fussell conducted and premiered, who is the composer of uh, Wyman Boston was to do a right. Cymbeline at Sanders Theater. I'm the narrator of Cymbeline Monday night in Sanders Theater, and Charles Fussell is the composer of that. It's an adaptation, concert adaptation, of Shakespeare's Cymbeline. Very difficult to perform play in verse. Anyway, then you, you asked me. Uh, Charles premiered a work of Virgil Thompson's and mine, and it's called, I call it at that time, The Peace Plays. And these lines, I was told you might ask me that, so yeah. I'm trying to remember. If <laughs> I have a you know, hard we time, won't know if you make a I have mistake. a hard time remembering my own line. It goes, this is the text of this choral work. Uh, this is a place for peace on land, joy to all mankind. This is a place for peace in the air, joy to all the creatures. This is a place for peace in the seas, joy to all the species. This is a place for peace in the fire, joy to all who forge. Peace to water, to fire, to air. Peace on earth, joy everywhere. How lovely. Well, I, lovely. I'm, I'm pleased with what they say at this time of the year. We're going into Thanksgiving, and, and uh, Virgil uh, set them very, very beautifully. Very special and man. Charles Fussell. Yeah. Uh, um, and you wrote it beautifully. Let me just tell you a couple of things before I tell you where Jack will be. Um, the Smithsonian Institute just took Jimmy Olsen's bow tie and put it in their pop culture exhibit. And uh, Jack was honored at Harvard on June 15th, my wedding anniversary. He received a certificate of honors for the contribution to the arts. Wow. And he will be and is here, 8 o'clock, uh, Sa Sanders Theater at Harvard University. Um, the, the new music ensemble will open its 15th anniversary season and with the work Cymbeline after Shakespeare by Charles Fussell. And that is Monday night. At 8 o'clock, and I have a further hope for, for Boston. I believe Sarah Caldwell is, is planning to do a production of Virgil Thompson's in my opera, Lord Byron. She's a wonderful, oh, she's wonderful that opera company and so well. Virgil yeah. and I went to be with her. We hope that very much. Sarah Caldwell, if you're listening, raise the money and do it. Then you promise you'll come back. Oh, I'd love to come you back. You will? I'd love to, I'd love to talk more with you. Good. I really would, Jack. Maybe it's I'll be back for Bright Lights, Big City. That, with Michael yes. J. Fox? Michael J. Great. Fox. We'd look forward to that. Thank nice you to for, know you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here.